What's up, YouTube? I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day, and we're here to talk about semen retention. All right, I may not look the best right now. I may not be the most fit, but let me tell you, I feel great on the inside. Don't get me wrong. I feel just like anyone else, but I feel very confident. I feel very happy with the way I am, and I feel very energetic. All right, I've been practicing semen retention. I've actually lost track of the days. It's been so long. I originally started doing semen retention because I started to go through a period where, you know, well, let's be honest. I started to go through a period where I started to become sober from smoking weed and drinking alcohol. I decided to quit doing those things because it was affecting my life in a very negative way. It was affecting my relationships around me. I was starting to get feelings at night, like my legs would tense up and I would start to go into cold sweats. Like I was abusing the drugs and alcohol so much that I would start withdrawing through the night because it would wear off so quickly that I would wake up in the middle of the night after, you know, everything wore off and I would be feeling withdrawals in my legs and things like that. So I decided to give up that stuff because it was ruining my entire life. It was ruining my bank account. It was ruining my relationships. It was ruining my relationship with God and Jesus Christ, which is something I hold very dear to me. Um, not saying that you have to. I'm just putting that out there for the people that would like to hear that, right? Because that's something I do believe in, okay? But, you know, I'm not saying you have to, right? I, I'm, this video is very open to all types of people. But I'm just putting it out there that, you know, God and Jesus Christ has really helped me through my journey. So I decided to give up smoking weed. I decided to give up drinking alcohol. Right. And when you when you decide to give those things up, you know, you have to kind of separate yourself from friends, family. Um, it can be hard to be around other people. Uh, you start to reach out to old people. And I started to reach out to an old girlfriend, um, an ex-girlfriend, because she helped me become sober previously um, she took me in and she helped me and she gave me love so you know naturally when I decided to go sober I started to think like I wonder what she's up to or I wonder what's going on with her like let me try to contact her and when I tried to contact her you know of course she had a new boyfriend which can get very tricky and sticky and I ended up still talking on the phone with her and being able to you know reach out to her and she was there for me and it hurt me so bad I, I probably cried for like I didn't cry for a whole day but I was breaking down and crying every hour about it you know I, I was really upset that I had pushed her away like that because the drugs and alcohol will make you push people away because you end up self-medicating so you always feel good because of your drug or the alcohol but it's only temporary so you have to keep you know keep taking that drug or keep drinking um so it's only temporary and also when once it wears off you're also pushing the people away because now you're going through the withdrawal period so now anybody around you is going to feel uncomfortable and you're going to be putting that feeling that you're going through that negative experience onto everyone else so i did end up pushing her away you know it breaks my heart and i couldn't see it at the time i was like well, why why can't I just, you know, talk to you or why can't we talk on the phone like every night or, you know, why can't you be there for me? Right. Like I didn't see it at the time. I didn't put it together that it had been so much time that she really had gotten past me because I was not treating her right. Even if I was the best thing for her at one point in time, you know, as time moves forward, I ended up being the worst thing for her. So I'm happy that she moved on. But I really started to feel like I don't really want to be having sex with other people because they're not going to be here forever, right? I wanted to start to kind of like hold back. And I absolutely didn't feel like, you know, beating my meat or anything like that because why would you want to beat your meat to like a screen of some person you don't know? It just felt wrong. It felt immoral, especially after being with this ex-girlfriend for so long and the hurt that I was feeling that she had left me um, how she had left and found somebody new it kind of made me feel like relationships are temporary 
So the next relationship I have, I'm going to make sure to do everything in my power to not be abandoned, which might seem a little bit messed up or messy to some of you guys, but there's really nothing wrong with not wanting to be abandoned, right? It's just not pushing somebody away. It's not cheating on them. It's not taking drugs or alcohol. It's not disrespecting them. It's not, you know, hurting them, right? That's the ways you don't get abandoned is just by playing your cards right and being there for them and being that person that they can talk to, you know, just like she was for me. So she taught me a lot of valuable lessons and I decided like, you know what? It's not such a fast thing no more where I just want to beat my meat to a screen for some temporary feeling or I just want to go hook up with somebody just to get that temporary feeling or to relieve the hurt and get a temporary feel good, right? I went through my pain and I realized I'm not just going to hide from this pain no more or I'm not just going to like try to temporarily feel good, right? I already quit the 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 weed, the alcohol, and now I was starting to quit, you know, busting nuts. You feel what I'm saying? Semen retention is the thing I started to do because just the idea of like busting a nut made me feel very bad about myself. It made me feel like disappointed and then I couldn't even do it. Like I couldn't even bring myself to do it because of the hurt that I was feeling. So the emotions is what got me through um, because I would start to feel kind of like, you know, sad. And when you feel sad, you don't want to beat your meat, you know. And obviously, I wasn't trying to hook up with a girl, uh, like, just at the bar. Well, I don't go to bars. But I wasn't just trying to hook up with some fast chick, right? I was really trying to find, like, my next wife. Like, I'm trying to find my wifey, right? Before I ever have sex again. And beating my meat to a screen is so out of the question right now. <laughs> so, that's basically where I was at. And I've lost track of the days. I've been holding on to my semen. Um, <laughs> I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that my dreams are good tonight. But I haven't had any sexual dreams in quite some time now. You know, I think the emotions really help to sort of like rid my... And the, I've been praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Please pump my body with the Holy Spirit and remove the devil from me. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So I think this prayer has been helping me because all my life when I try to like hold in my semen, I start to get these sexual, lustful dreams of like these just bimbo women who I just start to like. And once again, in the name of Jesus Christ, please watch over my body, soul, and spirit tonight and remove any sexual lust from my body and my dreams. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So yeah, basically, and thank you if you're still with me, if you're still hanging in there, because I promise you it's getting to the juice of the video. So keep on watching. But basically, my sexual dreams, they went away. When I started seeing women in my life, I started to not feel lustful towards them anymore. I started to feel compassionate. I started to feel like, hey, hey, you know what? Like, I'd rather just talk to you right now than like feel lustful about you. And it's making me become more like um, not afraid to approach women because now I'm approaching them for a different reason. I'm not approaching them to like get get in their pants, right? I'm approaching these women because I'm trying to find my wife. And once you once you get that in order, you realize it's not scary to approach women because you're just approaching them saying like, oh, hey, what's your favorite color? What do you like to do? And, and you can sort of weed out the women slowly and pick out your woman because with semen retention, the women are naturally going to gravitate towards you. They are going to see that you have testosterone, you're a man, you're holding on to semen. It's crazy, guys. Women can tell that you're holding on to semen. Like if some if some dude that's just releasing all his semen walks in, they're going to be like, they might give him a slight glance. But if you walk in and you're holding on to that semen and you don't know how long it's been, but you can feel, you just feel like you have that semen within you. You walk in the room and girls are like, they just are like looking at you and wanting to be talked to. Like one thing I realized about women is deep down, they want you to talk to them. It doesn't matter if they have a girlfriend, a husband, 
as long as you treat them with respect and you don't lust for them and you don't speak to them in like a sexual immoral way they want you to talk to them guys it doesn't matter if they have a husband a boyfriend it doesn't matter if they're a lesbian guys they want that interaction with a man because women look up to men in a crazy way women really look up to men so they all want you to talk to them you just have to find the right way to speak to women and if you're looking for a wife it's okay to try to talk to all the women not in any type of way just talk to them and get to know them and get to know their personality because people's bodies are so deceiving guys your body means nothing. And and women already understand this. That's why they can sense when you're holding on to semen. Because you could be the ugliest guy. But if you go on semen retention, the baddest women, baddest because who really cares, right? You don't want the, the baddest women. You don't really want that, right? You want to really feel them out and talk to them and get to know their personality, who they are, what they believe in. But I'm just saying for the point of the video that you could be the ugliest guy and you could start doing semen retention and the baddest women will start looking at you, wanting to talk to you, flirting with you. Because it doesn't matter looks to them. They they already know about what's on the inside. Just like how men need to be more. Men need to look on the inside of women. It's the sexual lust and the sexual immorality that makes you just look at the physical. If you can hold on to this semen retention, you will start to go into the spiritual. You'll get deeper into the spiritual, and then you will want to know, you will find, you want to find your wife that is more on a better spiritual place. You don't care about the physical anymore. You want, you either want to find the wife that you can help, that you relate to, that you could say, hey, I want to be your man because I see myself in you. So I want you to look up to me because then I can guide you through life. That's really the wife that you want to find is you want to find someone that you have a heart for that you can relate to. Right. Especially if you've dealt with problems with women in your life growing up. Right. Where, where maybe you didn't connect with the women in your life growing up. Right. When you're an adult, it's like you are starting fresh. So now you can pick out the woman that you relate to that you really feel for and you can approach them and you can ask them on a date and you can get to know them and you can speak with them and you can just it's like a it's like a do-over it's like a complete do-over if when you were a kid you didn't have you know the best situation uh with like you know some type of woman right it's like a do-over for you as an adult you can you can pick basically you get to pick your woman out the one that, please pick out the one that you feel for, guys, that you have emotion for, right? And, and deeper than emotion that you feel like a spiritual connection with. Don't just go for something in the physical, all right? That's why you need to do semen retention because you need to break away from those ideas because they're very primitive. And when you're doing semen retention, you're getting more, it's like you're getting like a more dense brain, but you're also getting a more dense spirit, right? Your your head might not literally be growing and your body might not literally be getting bigger, but your spirit within you is getting more dense and your brain is getting more dense. There's more connections happening and there's more ideas that you're getting. But just make sure to use these ideas for good and not for bad. In the name of Jesus Christ, please guide my spirit and my body and use my body as a vessel. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So make sure to use these connections, these newfound connections through semen retention in a good way, guys. You can use it for your job. Uh, you can use it for your family life. You can use it for if you like working on cars, if you like sports. Okay, what I'm saying is put off having sex for a little while and you will find your wife or your wife will find you. And then you can move forward with that whole period. Instead of just always being sexual, immoral, immortality, immorality, excuse me. And instead of always just, you know, beating your meat to something through a screen or a magazine or some type of lustful thought. If you guys can actually put off this um, good feeling, right? Because let's just be honest, when you have sex, it feels good. Uh, 
we're just putting that out there. Just be honest. It feels good, right? But it feels so much better with the correct person that you care about, that you have an emotional connection with. And if you don't believe in the things I'm talking about, you just haven't experienced them yet. So I'm here as like your big brother to tell you that these things do come, right? If you're some type of street dude, um, find you a street girl, right? Like, not like how I'm saying, not how they're saying like, oh, she's for the streets, right? Like what I mean is like, let's let's say you had, had like a hard time growing up, whatever your situation was, find you a girl like that and then be her man. Don't cheat on her, guide her. The men and women are meant to complement each other, guys. That's when you can start having sex, when you've sort of made like a commitment to each other. Hopefully marriage, right? Because in the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Scriptures in the Bible, they tell you to be celibate until you get married. That's in the Holy Scriptures. That's in the Bible. So I'm just putting that out there. Or I'm not forcing you or anything, but I'm just putting it out there for the video. So... So let's say let's say you grew up a certain way and then you find a woman who you can relate to, right? You know, it doesn't matter your situations, right? Because there's always someone out there who has gone through similar situations. So find a woman like that who you can connect with, right? It doesn't matter like how a woman looks. You want to have that original um attraction. That's what gets you guys to uh originally conversate is like the attraction that's the reason you want to talk to them uh but don't just go off like your type or don't go off like oh this is my checklist physically there is no such thing guys it's more of a spiritual checklist and also just when you speak to them you're gonna feel a certain connection or you're not gonna feel a connection like there's girls i'm attracted to but the things they say i instantly know well, she's not for me, right? Then then there's somebody who, you know, like you might right away you might you might sort of look past them, but then you get a chance to be around them and you feel like you feel like your heart is sort of like earning for theirs. Like you guys start walking kind of close to them and then you just feel like this like pull. It's like a literal pull. And these are things that will get stronger with the longer you go on semen retention. So you don't have to feel like, oh, I need to rush this. Or after one month, I'm going to find my wife. Or after one year, it's time to find. No, the longer that you build up this uh, semen retention, this semen is going to change you forever, right? Like one month of semen retention will have a lasting impact on you forever. One year semen retention, that's going to change you forever, right? That's your time as a young man to sort of be coming of age. Because if you've just been releasing your semen your whole life, you could be 24, but you could be at an even younger age mentally, um, spiritually, because you've just been releasing your seed, right? God, in the name of Jesus Christ, wants us to build up our semen. He wants us to be celibate. And this is the way we are actually maturing. So don't rush anything, right? Do not rush a single thing, guys. The woman is supposed to come to you, right? You're supposed to be the one who's bold, who speaks to her, who has the confidence, who's not afraid to, like, initiate it, the conversation. But when women really want you, they will initiate the, you know, the sex, guys. Or if you don't want to have sex right away, you, you're, you're trying to be celibate, you know, they're still going to come on to you. And it's just for you and your terms to, you know, do. I suggest you read the Holy Bible. But, you know, as a man, you do not need to force a single situation. You got to be subtle and you got to put yourself out there. But the woman knows what she wants, guys. Think about all the times that you have had sex. Didn't the woman kind of like come on to you? Come on, guys, just think about it. For me... The woman usually comes on to me, right? If I'm trying to force a situation, then they're like, oh, yeah, you know, my so-and-so just called me. I got to go pick them. You know, women are very subtle. So you got to be subtle with them. Okay, men can be very bold and honest to each other, right? But with women, you got to be subtle. Once she's your wife, you can be a bit honest with her, right? Guide her, help her, right? But when you're first getting into a situation, you want to be a bit more subtle with them. You want to be a bit more chill, all right, because, you know, women do have anxieties, right? As a man, 
the longer you go on semen retention, you're going to be getting rid of your anxieties. You're going to feel basically like you could do anything. That's that testosterone building up and that's just your semen building up and that's just you growing into your manhood. Basically feeling like I could do anything. I'm not afraid to like say this or I'm not afraid to like really do much. But women still have some anxieties. That's why they need a man to come into their life to cease their anxieties. They can come to you and say, well, this is something I'm worrying about. And you can say, hey, this is the way I look at it. And you might not even know. You might just be up forth and honest and you might cease their anxieties. Just them having someone they can come to and get the truth, not the truth, but how you feel, right? Like you say something for how you feel, right? And then they can take that and realize, you know what? I think he's right. I, th I should just stop worrying. So yeah, the longer you can go on semen retention, the better, right? I'm not saying be celibate. Well, you can do whatever you want, right? But I'm not saying be celibate until you're 80 and then look for some old granny to settle down with, right? It's not a certain time frame of being, you know, celibate or semen retention, guys. It's it's literally all about once you feel that connection with somebody, you move forward with them. And you move forward, you know, by talking to them and getting more comfortable and familiar with them. Maybe taking them on a date, maybe texting with them. If they're comfortable, maybe a phone call, right? But do not rush it once you found your person because if you feel secure in that person and that person feels secure in you, there's no point to rush anything physical because you guys could move forward. That could be your wife one day. So it's you You would rather hold on to more energy, more semen retention. You'd rather hold on to more of that energy because one day when she is your wife, you guys are going to be reproducing. You are going to be having sex. And that's something that's going to be a beautiful thing. Blessed by God, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ. But until then, you want to keep growing into your manhood so she keeps being attracted to you. So you don't want to rush it until she's ready. So you want to, that. and by the way, this is the ways I've messed up in the past with women is instantly physical. And then after a while, it kind of like fades out because you just keep giving all your energy, all of your semen, you keep giving all your semen. And then eventually you start be like, you, you start downgrading and lowering your level. Uh, because you're just performing too many sexual activities um, too often without any type of like emotional feelings. So when you find the right person and you and you get married and you start uh, basically reproducing, you know, God is going to keep blessing you in the name of Jesus Christ because he wants you to reproduce. He said, be fruitful with your seed, you know, with your wife, with with one person, guys, so that the kids have a mother and a father and a family unit. Because a, a, a woman looks up to a man and a, a kid looks up to both a woman and a man. So it's very important that we, ha we, we unite the family unit, guys. It's so important to unite the family unit. So use this time right now to use semen retention as a tool to not only find your wife, but to just become the best man you can be. It's really about you. Semen retention is all about you. How can you become the best man you can be? How can you focus on your career? How can you focus on God and the name of Jesus Christ? How can you focus on just basically being in God's will, what he wants for you, right? Everything else will come to you. You might have to approach situations just to see, just to feel it out, just to sort of like get yourself out there. But once you put your foot out there, just let just let it come to you and everything will be OK. So. So basically, uh, just bear with me, guys, because there is a couple more points that I'm going to be getting across. So thank you if you're still watching. Um, basically, don't rush into like anything unless you feel that it's the right situation. Right. Let's say you found somebody and you're like, this is my wife. I already know. I just got to make sure that, you know. I don't force her to abandon me, right? I got to make sure to do the correct steps and to not come on too strong, but also not not just dial it back too much. So at this point, like I, I was saying, continue with your semen retention unless she just comes on to you, right? Because 
the more you can build up this semen retention, the longer it will last, guys, right? Because you're becoming a better and better man. And once you get married and once you start reproducing, God will continue blessing you and continue uh, guiding you with this person. Because if he sees them as being fit for you, you know, there's other ways that you can also get closer to God, right? Because through semen retention, it's bringing you closer to God. And it's a tool you can use when you are single. But let's say you get married and now all of a sudden you're having kids and you're, 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 you're having sex, right? Don't get afraid like, oh no, now I'm going to get less closer to God because now I'm not doing semen retention, right? Now I found my wife and we'll be, you know, together forever. But, but now that I'm having sex now, you know, I'm not being blessed by God as much anymore. He's not giving me this uh, Holy Spirit as much anymore. He will continue to keep pumping the Holy Spirit into you. He'll continue to keep blessing you. It's just going to be in a different way, guys. You might want to start eating healthier. Uh, through eating healthier, you can also... But semen retention is number one, guys. If you are single, if you're trying to become the best man, that's the number one thing you can do. But once you become married and you, you know, you're trying to have kids or, you know, you're just having sex with your wife, right? Then that's a beautiful thing. So then you move into like, all right, well, I can probably eat healthy. Um, I already don't smoke or drink. You know, I already don't smoke or drink, right? Um, I'm not saying you don't, but I'm, I'm begging you to give that stuff a break because that's what's going to help with the semen retention, right? If you can quit that stuff and do semen retention, you're going to be just fine. You're not even going to miss drugs or alcohol at all. You're going to be completely fine. I'm telling you. Um, so once you're married and, and then you are having sex, don't be down about like, oh, man, like now I can't be on semen retention anymore. Start eating healthy. Um, Start praying to God. Start going to church. Start having open conversations with your wife. Uh, start doing good deeds for people. Just in the name of Jesus Christ, let God guide you, use you as a vessel to do these good deeds, right? Don't do a good deed and expect a good deed back. You're just doing something good for somebody and God is doing that through you. Okay, so don't be like down that you can't do semen retention forever because it does become addictive to do semen retention. You're like, you start finding a, a girl that you potentially want to like move forward with and you're like, oh man, but I don't know. I, I kind of like semen retention so much. I don't know if I even want to give myself to her because, you know, it's like you start to become selfish with your semen and you're like, wow, I like having this inside of me. It makes me feel closer to God in the name of Jesus Christ. It makes the women attract to me and... I just like talking to women. It's not that I like to like, I'm not trying to attract them into anything. There's really only one person right now I really am looking at in that kind of way that I do want to move forward with. But these other women, it does feel nice to be able to talk to them, to speak to them, to have that kind of emotional closeness. And I wouldn't be there if it wasn't through semen retention. So it can be kind of scary to think like, you know, it's like you kind of want to slow it down to like a super slow pace with the one that you have found to sort of test her a little bit because you want to keep holding on to this semen retention. You want to keep like using it because great things are happening when you begin this semen retention, right? It just takes a lot of self-control. And the way I did it is simply just through pain, right? I was going through all this pain and it all worked out in the end. And now I'm just feeling like addicted to semen retention and I'm not quite ready to even have sex. But if you would have asked me two months ago, man, I, all right, I might not be setting the best example right now, but two months ago, oh man, I would have smashed anything. I would have smashed anything. You're looking at a completely new man right now. And I might not look that different physically, but I have a new spirit within me. Dear God, I'd like to repent for my sins that I have committed of sexual immorality, you know, around two months ago, three months ago. You know, I'm not counting the days or anything, but I know I feel way better right now. And I want to thank you for guiding me on this semen retention journey in the name of Jesus Christ. Remove the devil from my body and use my body as a vessel to spread the holy word in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, hey, thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to pass this message on to somebody who really needs it, guys. All right? I'm not just being boastful. I'm not just being, like, arrogant. These messages will help people, guys, because I did not come up with these messages myself. This is all coming through God in the name of Jesus Christ. He is using my body as a vessel 
to get these words across to people that really need them. So please support my channel, like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it, and I'm out.